Good morning, Gary. Good morning. How are you doing? Doing well, man. I really appreciate you jumping on with us. I know it's been a whirlwind for you uh, with the rookie uh, mini camp in Kansas City, then trying to get back home to South Bend, Indiana, to spend a little time with your parents, and probably haven't had a lot of sleep. So we really appreciate the time. Before we backtrack, let's let's pick it up with where you're at right now. I know that uh, mm-hmm. there was a possibility you could have been drafted late in the draft, maybe the sixth or seventh round. That didn't happen, but you immediately signed a free agent contract with the Kansas City Chiefs. They were on top of yeah. it quickly. What led to the decision to go with the Chiefs, and and how do you feel about your opportunity there in Kansas City? Uh, it was a bunch of different things. Um, obviously, the the goal was to get drafted, and then and that didn't happen. So we had a game plan ready. Uh, we had a we had a lot of teams to kind of choose from, and um, we just thought that the Chiefs was the best situation for me um, to make the fifty three man team. So. Um, I mean, we we went with it, and and I'm very happy with that decision. Uh, the past rookie mini camp was a lot of fun. Um, had to play with a couple of really good players, and um, you know, it was a it was a cool experience to be on the NFL team for the first time and and kind of experience the the thing I've been dreaming about my whole life to play in the NFL. So it's been uh, it's been pretty cool, and I'm, I'm definitely happy with that decision. Yeah, we're excited for you. Of course, down the road, uh, you know, Kansas City is an established team, a good football team, won 11 games the last year, a playoff team. But they drafted Patrick Mahomes, quarterback number 10 overall. And just kind of reading some stories and looking at some pictures on the Internet, it looked like you and and Patrick Mahomes bonded pretty quick out there in Kansas City. Am I right about that? Yeah, uh, I think think he did a really good job of of bonding with all the receivers and and tight ends and running backs. But um, you can tell that. He's going to be a special player in the NFL. Um, there's a reason they took him with the 10th overall pick. But, uh, I mean, he's a, he's a really cool guy, and I'm looking forward to, to getting to know him more and, and getting on the field with him a little bit more. Garrig, um, you mentioned it's a dream to play in the National Football League, and you have a unique skill set. You've got the measurables, 6'3", over 200 pounds. You're physical. You caught a lot of passes, 94 passes. Uh, at at Bowling Green as as a junior, a thousand thirty eight yards, or as a you know as a, as a junior there before transferring as a senior transfer to Alabama. Then you come to Alabama and you're asked to do something different. You know you're a slot guy, you're blocking a lot. You didn't catch as many passes, but you played on the best team in the country, played for a national yep. championship. Combining what you did at Bowling Green with what you were asked to do at Alabama, I, I get the feeling that's really prepared you for just about any role that the Chiefs could ask you to play in Kansas City. Yeah, that's that's definitely one of the things that I think helped me a lot was playing at Bama this past season. Um, going in the slot, that's what I did this past weekend in, in, in KC was play mostly slot. So um, kind of having that experience already and, and getting a year of it under my belt, um, I think that really helped me um, to my overall game, really, because I could feel like I could play any of the receiver positions effectively now. Um, they want to put me on the outside. I feel great on the outside and inside, same thing. So, um you know, the year at Bama obviously didn't have the, the stats and stuff that I wanted, but um, I think overall it helped my game a lot. And going against that defense every day and those quality players and, and just learning from all those coaches there, I think that helped me a lot. Yeah, let's talk about uh, that decision because after that huge season at Bowling Green, you graduated, you just made the decision that you wanted to transfer to a, a Power 5 program. A lot of schools were interested Clearly, Alabama right now is the best program in the country. But what was it other than the winning that attracted you to Alabama and made them your choice as a graduate transfer stop? I just thought it was great for me to to help me out when I well, my ultimate goal is to get there myself. So obviously, going there and, and doing all the little things, playing special teams, um, I think that's something that really influenced my decision was being able to kind of do things that I haven't done before in the college in college so um I think playing special teams and kind of having a different role I think that's what really influenced influenced me other than obviously the winning and playing for national championships and stuff but I think those are the biggest things former Alabama wide receiver Gary Dieter now of the Kansas City Chiefs is our guest on the Gary Harris show here on the Bud Light Hotline presented by Adams Beverages you mentioned special teams and you and uh, or my, myself and your dad, Derek, have talked a lot about this. You're one of the few people in the country uh, that played on offense. You played on kick return, 
punt return, kick and punt coverage teams, that is something the NFL loves. When you're talking about the final few roster spots, if you've got a wide receiver who's versatile enough to do some other things, that can be the difference sometimes in making a club and not making a club. You embrace that role at Alabama. As I said, you're a guy that caught 94 passes at Bowling Green for over 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. It would have been easy for you to come in here and say, I'm not a special teams guy, but you embrace that role. Why? I just think that um, the, the more you do, the more valuable you are, especially in the NFL. Um, everybody in the NFL that makes the team is some of the most talented guys in the world. So um, to be able to be versatile and, and do the things that a lot of guys really just don't want to do, um, they have the talent to do it, but they just don't want to do it. So, uh, you know, I feel like I have the talent and, and the ability for me to want to do it. I think that's kind of what will separate me at the end of the day. You came to Alabama to win a championship, and you got it done. You won the SEC championship. You won the college football semifinal over Washington. Then you go to the national title game. All eyes in the sports world are on you and Clemson that Monday night. And you're so close. Uh, after yeah. having the lead most of the game, going into the fourth quarter, they rally, take the lead. The offense comes back down. Hurt scores the touchdown with 2.07 to go. You've got the lead again. The defense, which is the best in the country, doesn't hold up. And with two seconds to go, they win the football game. Now, I know losing is part of sports. You have to be able to deal with it. But to have to come to Alabama to win a national title, to be that close to where you can taste it and have it ripped out from under you like that. It's one thing if you're down 14 with three minutes to go, you kind of the reality sets in, hey, we're going to lose. But here you are on the verge of winning or at least maybe going to overtime. How difficult a pill was that to swallow to watch them score that touchdown to win really on the last play of the game? Yeah, um, it was pretty hard. Um, obviously, I don't think it, it really hit me yet that I even played at Alabama, that I played in the National Championship. Um, it's still pretty surreal to me, but, um, you know, just going in that situation, I don't think we will want um, any other situation. We want our defense on the field in that in that time of the game, and um, obviously that is – They've made a lot of plays up in the game that you know, we really can't do anything about. So um, you just got to live with it and, and move on from it. You can't, you can't dwell on the past. You can just only control what's going to happen in your future. So um, to me, um, it was a great experience playing in that game. Um, it's something that any college football player wants to do. So to be able to do it, um, obviously not come out on the, the winning side, but to come out and, and play in that game. And, um, you know, it's just an experience in my uh, friends and family got to come, so um, for them to come and see that game and, and for me to be in it, uh, it was just a great experience. As you try to make this Kansas City Chiefs roster and establish yourself and, and build a career in the NFL, I have read it, I have heard it, I have seen it with my own eyes. Uh, there are a lot of people that feel like playing at Alabama is as close as you can get in college to playing on an NFL type of or playing in an NFL type environment, everything from the way Saban mm-hmm. runs his program to his own NFL experience to all the guys that are that are prepping to get ready for the league, playing against the top level competition in college every week in the SEC. You feel that way, Gary? You feel like that one year at Alabama has helped prepare you to play in the National Football League? Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, I mean, you can just tell from the way Coach Saban runs things and, and how I, I mean, just this past weekend with the Chiefs, um, it's, it's pretty similar. You know, he's he's got everything mapped out. He's got everything um, to the T. So um, going from Bama to, well, I don't think it was that much of a transition. Uh, I think the bigger transition was going from Bowling Green to Alabama just because the way they, that it's so much different, um, the way they run things. But, um I think it definitely helps out, and, and I think a lot of players have, have noticed that, and, and I think that's why a lot of the Alabama players are so successful because they don't have to spend time getting used to the way they run things. They just have to know the playbooks and, and try to get on the field other than kind of the off-the-field stuff. Gary, you mentioned uh, how much it hurt to, to lose that game to Clemson. I, I want to visit with you, though, about you know Saban likes to keep distractions to a minimum control what you can control don't pay attention to the outside noise but that had to be difficult as an offensive football player when you're getting ready for the SEC championship game you're getting ready for the college football playoff a lot of things are being written about Lane Kiffin we know that he's looking for jobs would he go to LSU would he get a head coaching job 
I have talked with players since that game against Washington that said, hey, yeah, we probably weren't as prepared as we usually are. We had trouble getting the calls in. That week, it seemed like there was, you know, Kiffin had been preoccupied some, and, and there were some mental errors that were caused by the fact that, you know, some of the plays that we called, we had not worked on in practice. You know, what was that like, the biggest point in the season? And, and regardless of, of how Coach Saban likes to block things out, it seems like there were distractions getting ready for that college football playoff with Kiffin. Was that the case? Um, I, I really don't think that was that many distractions. Um, I think it was, a, it was a thing that we just didn't execute. Um, you know, we come out every game, and I mean, we obviously have the potential to, to explode on offense every single game, and, and I don't think we did that a whole year, but um, I don't think there's any distractions for us. I mean, it was pretty um, – I mean, we, we kind of knew Coach Kiffin was probably going to go somewhere um, after having so much success here. I mean, he'd obviously have opportunities to go somewhere else, but um, switching from him to Sarkeesian, um, it really wasn't anything major. Um, they, just, they really didn't, he didn't really, didn't really change much. He just changed a couple formations and, and the way we get into formations. So, um, to me, there wasn't any distractions. I'm not sure about anybody else, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't think that's a a reason for us to to dwell on why we didn't do good on offense, but. Um, you know, I just feel like we just didn't execute when we needed to. And, and um, yeah, so I mean, to me, it just wasn't a, a distraction. Gotcha. All right, well, I'm glad you put that to rest. And you felt like in the national championship game against Clemson with Sark calling the plays after you'd had Kiffin for the previous 14 games, you, you don't consider that an issue at all. You thought everything, uh, the game was called fine. Yeah, definitely. All right, again, let's focus on what's ahead because uh, you've had an outstanding collegiate career, and I didn't even mention you. you you're you well-traveled. You actually started at SMU before going to, uh, to to Bowling Green and then to Alabama. But now looking ahead, what's on tap? I, as we said, you just finished with a rookie mini camp. I know you're back home in South Bend, Indiana. You're going to do a, a football camp up there this summer for kids, which is outstanding. But kind of take us through what's ahead for you this, this spring and summer as um, – you get ready for training camp with with Kansas City uh, coming up in late July. Yeah, uh, I head back on Sunday for OTAs, and then um, honestly, I'm not too sure what the real schedule is like. Um, I think I'll get that when I get there on Sunday. But um, I just know that OTAs are coming up, so I've got to focus on that. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, right now I just don't know the exact schedule, but um, you know, just gotta be ready for whatever they they throw at me and. And just stay on top of things. Your first impressions of Andy Reid? Oh, uh, I mean, he seems like a really cool coach. A lot of, I think a lot of players really like him. Um, obviously, he's one of the best offensive coaches and head coaches in the NFL. So to be able to hear from him every single day is kind of like going into and listening to Saban every day. It's kind of surreal to to be uh, in meetings with him and, and and listen to how he does things. A little more laid back than Coach Saban, Derek and Garrick. Uh, I yeah, I would say so. He's uh he's more on the offensive side. Saban was more defensive side. So Saban always had that that defensive mentality, in my opinion. And Coach Reed's kind of more laid back. You know how off, I feel like offensive guys are more laid back anyway. So um, it's pretty cool to to go from him to to Coach Reed. So um, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm just gonna work my work my butt off to make the team. Yeah, we know you'll work. Well, you've got an interesting story. I guarantee you, as you know, uh, Bama Nation is pulling for you, and uh, we're going to watch your progress with uh, a lot of interest and, and keep up with you. And, man, listen, I really appreciate the time because I know you've been on a, on a whirlwind, and I, I appreciate you jumping on with us and give your dad my best. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for having me.